Good evening. It is time for our midweek uh, update or midweek video. And uh, Brother Randy is on his way back from Texas checking on his mom. She's doing better, so he feels comfortable heading back this way. But keep praying for her and for him as he travels. But uh, so I'll be filling in for him today. A couple things I want to highlight for us announcement wise of some things coming up. Uh, first of all, a reminder that on December the 24th, we will have two, two Christmas Eve candlelight services. One at 5 p.m. and one at 6.30 p.m. It's very important that you call and reserve a spot for you and your family at whichever of those services you're wanting to attend. We have limited seating at both of those to try to do the social distancing thing. So those reservations are letting us know that you're coming are going to be very important. Also, just to let you know, we will be doing the 5 o'clock service on Facebook Live. So if you cannot be here uh, Christmas Eve or don't feel comfortable being here, uh, just you can tune in to Facebook at 5 o'clock. We'll be on Facebook Live if you want to chat back and forth with each other while you're watching it. You probably want to go ahead and get your candle and some Lord's Supper elements uh, ready so you can partake of those things as we get to that part of the service. And then after the 5 o'clock service is over, we'll post that uh, Facebook Live video so you can do it later uh, at your convenience with your family. So just want to make sure you have that word. Also a reminder that on December the 27th, We'll have only one worship service that morning. It will be at 8.30 a.m., not 8.15, but 8.30. And then at 9.30, we will have Sunday school, not 9.45, but 9.30. So it will be an abbreviated worship service at 8.30, Sunday school at 9.30. Then we'll be done for the day there. Also, I <clears throat> need to let you know that if you've been here in person lately, you've noticed that we've had uh, tape with yellow signs saying no seating on this row. We have thrown away the tape and the yellow signs and gone to a new system to help with social distancing. So each pew will be marked with either seating for the 815 service or for the 11 o'clock service. So if you'll just pay attention to those signs, that helps us use a different set of pews for both services. Again, limiting the amount of contact and germs and all that stuff they're out there. So we're trying to do that. So that will be true this Sunday morning. And then for Christmas Eve, we'll have those marked for those two different service times. And then we'll figure out what we do on the 27th when we only have one service. So pay attention to those signs and please heed that. It helps us out, uh, looks better, helps us out, and uh, keeps us a little more distant. So help us out with all that. This morning, devotion-wise, I want to uh, dig into the Christmas story a little bit. In Sunday school, we've been looking at the coming of Christ or the Advent uh, through the eyes of Luke and all those things that we're digging into there. So hopefully you've been following that, either being here in person, uh, the videos that we put out or watching your class on Zoom or have. Or so again, if you're not able to be in your Sunday school class, uh, I do put out the sun adult Sunday school lesson every week uh, on YouTube and Facebook. So you can get that. And same is true for worship services if you can't be here in person. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. But we've been looking at that through Luke, but I want to take a look at it through Matthew's gospel uh, this morning and just more from Joseph's perspective, uh, not so much about Mary. So let me read the, the Christmas story, the coming of Christ out of Matthew's gospel, and then we'll look at a couple, three things very quickly of what we see in there and see what God speaks to us. So here's Matthew's version of the coming of Christ. This is how the birth of Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no relations with her, no union with her, until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So some things to point out from the passage very quickly. Uh, first, that it says that she was with child through the Holy Spirit. So this wasn't your average everyday pregnancy. This was God coming on Mary through the Holy Spirit. And Jesus then is literally the Son of God. That's a one-off experience, the only time it ever happened. 
because Jesus is God's one and only Son. And then we are joint heirs with Jesus when we give our lives to Christ. But it is, Jesus is the Son of God. He really is the Son of God. Second thing it talks about is it says Joseph was a righteous man. And I think that's important to know. It says he was going to divorce her quietly. And you think, well, they're just engaged. Why does he have to divorce her? The law of that day was when you're engaged or betrothed, it was a legal binding document. It's like they were married, only they lived separately for probably about a year uh, before they came together as husband and wife. So it was in this engagement period, and she was pregnant. He's thinking, what's the deal with this? Uh, so he was going to put her, put her away quietly because he was a righteous man. He didn't want to shame her and say, oh, what's wrong with her? She's tainted. He was just going to do it quietly so there was no disgrace. Because why? Because he had not yet gotten a plan or gotten word of what the plan was. He didn't know all that detail. And then the third thing we see is that the angel came and let him in on the plan. And the angel said to him, hey, don't be afraid to take her as your wife. This is from the Spirit. And he, you're going to have a boy and you're going to name him Jesus. Which means Yahweh is salvation or God is Savior. So the, and what he did next... <clears throat> what Joseph did next is telling, and it's a challenge to each and every one of us. Remember, he was a righteous man. That's what the Bible says. God's word says he was a righteous man. This is what he did. After he got the message from the angel, what he did next tells us what we need to do. He did exactly what God asked him to do. Let me read it again, verses 24 and 25. When Joseph woke up, after he had this vision with the angel, when he woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Joseph did exactly everything that the angel of the Lord, that God had asked him to do. So here's our life lesson from Matthew's account of the gospel, or Matthew's account of the coming of Christ. One is sometimes God is up to things that we're not yet aware of. Sometimes God is doing things that we're not yet aware of, and it looks wrong, or it looks chaotic, or it looks crazy to us, but we don't understand what God is doing through all this. Your engaged wife, your engaged spouse becoming pregnant outside of the marriage relationship doesn't make sense. It's not what you're looking for, but he didn't know what God was up to. In each of our lives, there's chaos and there's circumstances that don't make sense to us. Why would God allow this? Why would God... Uh, put me through this. Why is God uh, bringing this into my life? But maybe we're not aware of the plan. Maybe we don't understand all of what God is doing. Our world is in chaos right now. Uh, when you have to choose which pew you get to sit on a Sunday morning, it's a little chaotic. Why are we going through all this? Let's listen and see what God has to say to us through all of this. Maybe God has something going on that we're not yet aware of. The second point is, <clears throat> when he does reveal his plan, when God does let us know what it is he wants to do, what he's doing, what our part is, then our task is to do what Joseph did. Our task is doing, to do exactly what he asked us to do. Not to question, not to go, oh, Lord, surely you'll want to use somebody else. Uh, not, I'm not capable. Our task is to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to do what you're asking me to do. Even if it seems crazy, even if it seems chaotic, even if it's going to be a stress on me, I'm willing to do and follow you. So here's the question, the takeaway of this. What is God revealing to you lately? What is God revealing to you lately? What word of direction is he giving? Is he giving you a task that he wants you to do? Something he wants you to take on in your life? Something he wants you to give up in your life? Is he calling you to a ministry or a service? Is he calling you to share the gospel of Christ, the good news with someone specific? Or maybe he's calling you just to make sharing the gospel, the good news of Christ, a part of your daily life. What is God speaking to you right now? What has he been speaking to you lately? And if the answer is nothing, then maybe you need to ask about why. Why, why is God not showing me what he's up to? Maybe we need to spend more time in prayer with him. Maybe we need to be quiet and be still in his presence and listen and ask him, God, what do you want from me? What are you trying to show me in life? And then once he does, what is your response? What has your response been to what God's been speaking to you? And then an even better question is, what will your response be? What will my response be when God speaks? God is waiting for us to follow his lead. Our world is waiting for us to follow God's lead, to, to hear the good news, 
to see it lived out, to be a part of the ministries that God is calling us to do. God is waiting for us. Are we going to respond? And if so, will we, be, will we be like Joseph, the righteous man, and just do what God asks us to do? Nothing more, nothing less. Just do what God has asked us to do. I hope we will. I hope I will. So let's challenge each other to that. Let's pray together, and then we will see you uh, Sunday morning on in person or on the video. Love you guys. Father, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for your instruction in our life. Thank you that you do reveal to us what you're up to, what you're about. Father, sometimes it comes in a dream. Sometimes you speak to us clearly. Sometimes it comes through a word that we read in your scripture. Sometimes, God, it comes through a song. Sometimes it's a friend or a, a pastor. But, Father, you are in the business of speaking to us. So help us to be in the business of being obedient to you and following your directions and taking on the challenges you put before us. And God, simply to say yes, Lord, to whatever you ask us to do. Help us manage this task. Help us to stand up to this challenge we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good evening.